Hello everyone, in today's video I wanted to share some of the different aviation resources that are free and available on the internet for any of your flight planning needs. Our upcoming series of videos is going to be dedicated to using a lot of these tools in order to go ahead and find all sorts of neat information and take some really cool flights using a wide variety of different flight planning resources. So in order for us to actually take a look at that, what I thought we'd do is look at some of the sites that I always like to visit for different purposes. My first site, now I think this one is uh, pretty well known as far as the aviation community goes, is called Sky Vector. This gives you the ability to plan flights, to calculate wind, to show all sorts of different turbulence, to use different style charts for pretty much the entire planet. For example, I could come up here and set world VFR mode. It could tell me where all the TFRs are. I could even travel in the middle of way, way, way over here. I could spin out and say if I want to go in the middle of the Alps, for example. If I wanted to see if there's any IFR routes, I could go ahead and flip to world high. And you could see this for the entire planet with a couple of exceptions depending on what part of the world you're traveling because not everybody uses the same system for navigation throughout the Earth. But you can see just by taking a quick preview, 95% of every flight you'll ever plan, you could probably get everything off of this. And what makes this website even cooler, of course, if I did something, let's say I want to go EGLL, and I want to go to Laui, you can actually hold your mouse over something and it can give you details of it. For example, if I clicked on the actual airport's name itself, it would bring you to a place that would tell you where it is, it would provide you with any interesting information, what runway you have available, nearby airports, and this is where it gets really cool. If you happen to be in an airport that is in the United States, for example, I want to do JFK, which is a pretty standard example, not only does it give you all that information, but it gives you the chart supplementary from the AFD, and it has every single approach procedure you could possibly ever need, plus all your local things on it. It's incredible. Now, this is just our first website we're going to take a look at. And in general, I'm going to be using this website for almost anything that I use for any a particular flight. Now, of course, you could come in here and you could do things like and drag your a mouse. You could go ahead and say, hey, I want to use this particular location here. Maybe I want to come down here and I want to use this one as well. And now check this out. If I were to actually dial in my speed, let's say 400 knots, let's say I'm traveling an altitude of a flight level 200, there's actually a function in here that will actually create a navigational log for you that will estimate your distances, your times, your headings, everything you could possibly need, which is absolutely wild, and which is why it's our first and probably my most favorite of the websites that we're going to see today. However, this is just the beginning of what you can do with some of these different types of websites. So let's go ahead and now close out of Sky Vector. Let's go and take a look at my next one. This one's called AirNav. Uh, this particular website's pretty neat. It's uh, something that I use usually as a complement directly to what I've done and over in other programs as well. What AirNav basically does is it gives you all that information just in one place. So for example, if I wanted to go ahead and take a look at a VFR, we'll go ahead and use JFK again, just because we can. It'll come in here and tell you exactly where it is. It'll tell you its elevation, its uh, magnetic variation. It'll come down here and it'll even tell you things like what type it is, what its frequency is, what its TACAN channel, for those of you who are the military types. It'll give you information about the FSS. It'll tell you when it's on. It'll even give you usable information here, including altitude limitations. We can also do this with airports. So I could come in here again. We'll, we'll, pick on, we'll pick on Boston here for a second. And again, you get all that critical information in one spot. Now, if you want to have a little bit of fun and you happen to have your phone hanging around, you can actually call these ASOS numbers to actually find out exactly what the weather is in the real world at that exact time. Keep in mind that I'm not advocating doing this. I'm just saying it's kind of fun to do if you want to listen to the weather robot read you the weather somewhere out in the world. Just kind of fun just every once in a while. Okay, so these two are the really, really popular sites. I use them, like I said, for 95% of the flights that I do. But uh, there's other sites too. One is called Simbrief. Uh, this is another one that my virtual airline types are probably very, very familiar with. Uh, this website is absolutely wild as well. It gives you the ability to automatically calculate flights. Now, for those of you who have not seen this tool before, this is absolutely wild. I can literally come up here to dispatch, create a new flight, say I want to do, we'll do the same flight we just did a minute ago. I can, oops, sorry, helps if you do the flight number correctly, E-G-L-L, Lowy. Now what it will do is it'll actually calculate the uh, proper route to take. It'll give you suggested routes along with departures and arrivals. And it does other things too. If you actually were to come up here, you can pick what aircraft you're using. For example, if I want to take, uh, you know, an Airbus A340, It'll automatically calculate what my climb profile is. I can style in my uh, cost index. Again, this is for folks who do more airline -y kind of stuff. I can set to 400. I could, of course, go ahead and dial in any altitudes. I could estimate my times. And it will actually go through and calculate all of your different things that you need to do. Now, it gets even better. Check this out. 
I can actually generate this. This is a free website, by the way. You do have to go ahead and uh, set it up so that you can actually do it. It'll actually print out your paperwork for you. So it'll tell you exactly uh, what altitude you need to fly at for maximum performance. It'll tell you how long the flight's gonna take. It's gonna tell you how much fuel you're gonna have to carry. It's gonna tell you your takeoff weight. It's gonna come down here and it gives you each individual waypoint. It's gonna tell you what you need to dial into the simulator. This is an amazing free website, but it gets even better than that. Just scroll down here. You can actually download things. This is actually a pretty cool tool. It can actually download flight plans directly into your favorite flight simulator, which I think is absolutely wild. And again, you can go download all the individual um, information as far as weather goes and everything along those lines. This is a really, really cool website if you've not had a chance to play with this before. Now, one of the things we do in the real world is uh, we're always checking to make sure wherever we're going is not something that's been closed down, has some temporary restriction on it. So the tool that I use for that is uh, right over here. This is the DINS. This is only valid in the United States, unfortunately. The European version of this I'll share with you in just a minute. What this does is it gives me the ability to go ahead and type in a location. So let's say JFK again. I can set view notums, and it'll tell me every real world concern at the particular airport instantaneously. So if you actually take a look through, it's telling me that I've got some taxiway markings that are no good. It'll tell me if the runway is flooded. It'll tell me if I have high snow banks. It'll tell me something's out of service. Oh, look at this. This is a problem. Check this out. The VOR we were looking at is actually going to be out of service for a few days. Uh, not just a few days. Look at this. It's the 5th of October to the 25th of December. Holy smokes. So that's really going to wreck people if they didn't know that. Obviously, in the simulator, everything works all the time unless you break it. So none of this information is going to be too, too helpful for you unless, of course, you're looking for that extra kind of little piece. Now, is it possible to combine all these websites into one source? Uh, believe it or not, you can. There's two that I like to use for that. And first is called Flight Service. Uh, for those of you flying in the United States, uh, you're extremely, extremely familiar with this particular website. What this does is it gives you the ability to generate all that information that you had here, but the information is actually legal and can be used in a real flight. So again, the whole idea there is, is it's going to provide you the real world information, charts, everything you could possibly imagine all in one spot. You do have to sign up for this one. And again, we're looking for, unfortunately, this is a United States thing. I'm not 100% sure what the European equivalent of this. However, for those of you looking for the uh, non, I like to call it official way, you also have flight plan. I'm not gonna open this one up directly, but uh, basically anybody who's familiar with ForeFlight is probably familiar with this. This is Garmin's, basically, uh, they have their own little ForeFlight version. It's completely free to play with. It's got a lot of really, really slick features in it. It builds your flight plans. It does your wind calculations, everything all in one place. It's absolutely wild. Which now brings me to a rather unusual source, and uh, that's gonna be right here. And that's gonna be Google Maps. A lot of you folks are probably sitting there going, um, I, I thought we had Sky Vector. I thought we didn't need that. Well, for one of the flights that we're going to be doing uh, pretty soon, we're going to be using a technique called pilotage. You know, one of the best ways to do pilotage is to actually just get a good old-fashioned atlas and start looking at the different positions on the map and predicting exactly where you need to go. In this case, for example, if we were down here in New Haven and we wanted to come up with some sort of landmark that we could follow to get us over here to Old Saybrook, we could actually zoom out a little bit and try to find if there's any distinctive roads or rivers that we could simply follow to get exactly where we need to go. In this case, there's actually a very distinctive one that we could probably follow. This can be more obvious in a GPS, or I should say in a map situation, especially with satellite imagery, than it will be in something like Sky Vector or a regular chart. Now, um, some folks are probably going, well, I really like what you've done here, but uh, what about the folks who are in the rest of the world? You know, I'm very American-centric because I think you can figure out by my accent and where I always zoom in. So uh, what about the folks in the rest of the world? Well, I've got some great news. There's some wonderful resources for you folks as well. If you've ever searched up what they call EAIPs, what this will do is it will provide you with all the information about publications for all the airports in the rest of the world that you can use. Some of these are free, some of these are not free. But the way this basically works is we'd find the country. Again, I'll have links to this on my description for those of you who want to play with this. I can actually go all the way down here. Now I can make my way all the way down here. And you can actually see, like, for example, if I want to pick the UAE, uh, let's go ahead and pick this one. It says U United Arab Emirates. It says EAIP, UAE. I can go ahead and just go open that up in a new window. And it will actually give you all the information from that particular location. So all I would do is come over to my publication date, click on that. And now you get all the airplane flying information for that entire country all in one complete location. Now, why this is absolutely wild is I can actually come over here. I can go down to en route charts and it can go ahead and open up everything I need. 
you know, I can come down here, for example, uh, to aerodromes. I could pick if I want to do Abu Dhabi International. And it gives you everything for that particular place. You know, I could open up aerodrome obstacles. I could go ahead and take a look at location indicators. You could do it all at once. And here is the best part of all. If you actually scroll all the way down to the bottom, you can actually see that they provide you with every single one of these on PDF. Now, if you're a crazy person, you can get this entire document as a PDF. So now, for example, if I wanted to say, oh, I want to do ILS, uh, let's do our precision approach here, I can click this and it would give me an up-to-date uh, precision guidance approach terrain chart, just like that, that I can now print out and go ahead and use it wherever I need to use for any purpose. This is incredible, and it's not usually things that you're going to have in any other way. And again, this is a great, great website, and I will leave this one up. Now, another example, of course, is for folks who like to fly in the United Kingdom. Here's another one I took right off this website list over here. We can just go to the individual aerodromes. For example, if I want to do something like a Heathrow, which is a very, very busy airport. Let's go ahead and scroll down there. Where's our EGLL? Echo Golf Lima Lima. Uh, there it is. Now, of course, I can scroll to the bottom. And here are all those approach procedures that you can never seem to find the up-to-date versions completely free and completely easy to use. This is a great, great website. Definitely check it out for the instrument folks out there. Now let's go ahead and take a look at a slightly different website. Now, a lot of times in the uh, for visual flying, especially in the real world, we want to know what the weather is going to look like. There's a couple different really, really solid sources for the weather. The first one that I always like to use is called Windy TV. Again, none of these folks are giving me a commission. This is just what works for me. What this website does is it gives us the ability to see all the weather in with a bunch of different layers. Now, one thing I can do, which I think is really, really wild, is you can actually change what time it is. So, for example, if I wanted to go to 10 p.m., you can see how this will predict what the weather will look like at this time. Each one of these little arrows simply represents exactly what's going on. Like, I can see a very, very distinctive cyclone pattern here, which is basically pulling all the wind in that direction. Usually, where I live, uh, our wind comes out of our west, so this is an extremely strong depression. And of course, if I wanted to, I could even come down here and press play, and it'll actually fast forward so you can see what the trend of the weather is going to be over time. And at any point, of course, you can zip back and take another look at it. But where it gets even more fun is you can change the altitude you work at. For example, I could set this to 10,000 feet, and then you can see how all the wind shifts even more. Notice it's more out of the west now. If I bring this all the way up to, let's say, flight level 340, you can see very distinctively, yes, those winds are a lot stronger, but that jet stream is very, very clear. So if I were planning a flight, for example, trying to get to the UK, most likely what I'd be doing if I'm coming out of Boston is actually flying south a tiny bit to try to catch this jet stream and then arc back over and try to get there directly. As a matter of fact, you'd probably fly this and then go kind of wide and basically use that jet stream to carry you all the way over to the UK. And again, you can see how this is an amazing resource when it comes to planning, which one of my flight plans am I going to take today? The other cool thing, of course, is um, this works for the entire planet. So if I zoom out a little bit, you can go, ah, my eyes. And you can zoom in anywhere you need to and study the weather at any particular point. You can even do things like wave height for those of you who are nautical types. And you can see the waves have gotten a little interesting at this particular time of year, but it doesn't really surprise me at all. Great website. Which brings us to our final website that I'm going to show off, and that's the Aviation Weather Center. Now, this again, fortunately, sorry, everybody, this comes from NOAA, and it gives you the ability to get specific information for doing flight planning. When we do stuff with Dead Reckoning, you're going to really need to know this website one side to the other in order to use it well, because it's going to be providing you with those critical winds aloft. Now, the way this works is we can simply go ahead and look at the map. For example, we can see any flights, so we can get some reports. In this case, we've got a couple different reports flying over. If I can click on a report, it'll actually give me the observation. This, again, is pilot reports. Very, 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 very cool stuff. I could come up here, take a look at the individual places, but that's not where it gets awesome. Where this website gets awesome is we can get SIGMETs, which are significant meteorological concerns. And of course, you can also get AIRMETs, which are basically going to be the equivalent for things like icing and turbulence. In this case, you can see we have a tremendous amount of icing down in this general direction. Doesn't surprise me given the time of year. Now, one thing that I like to do is I like to come up here and hit turbulence, and you can go ahead and literally just pick where you'd like the turbulence to go. And it will give you a rough thing as far as that because that medium and it's going to give me a list of all the medium density ones and you can even come over here and set what the altitude is so for example if i went to 9,000 feet you can see the real turbulence in the u.s right now is actually considerably at west and there's actually a couple pip reps which are pilot reports telling us about that particular turbulence remember this is all up to date very very good information for anything so now we'll go over here we can actually take a look at icing which is solid i could go say a forecast icing for example and of course we could set the altitude let's say at 9,000 feet 
Looks like we have very little icing concern unless we're operating in central Canada or up towards Alaska. If we went up to, let's say, 19,000 feet, you can see it goes even down. If we go all the way down to, let's say, 1,000 feet, there's actually very, very little risk of icing, so we don't have to worry about it too much. We have terrain concerns instead. So again, absolutely wonderful stuff. Now, what I always use this for, of course, is usually going to be the winds and the temps. The winds and the temps are going to give us the ability to set the altitude and get the appropriate wind. Now, if I were up here in a Syracuse, for example, if I just click on this little wind bar, it tells me my wind is 180.7 knots. Now, for those of you familiar with aviation, would know that whenever you read something, that's going to indicate something that you're going to be using from a true heading as opposed to magnetic heading. So in this case, the wind is literally coming out of the due south at 7 knots. And you can tell by the wind barb, too, that it's just a single notch. Now, where this is really, really cool is I can actually change the altitude here. So if I set this up to, let's say, 12,000 feet, you can see the wind becomes more westerly at about 20 knots with the two barbs. Yeah, about 18 knots. I wasn't too far off. So now if I were planning a flight, let's say, from Albany to Syracuse, which is actually not too bad of a flight, you can see if I were coming from here to here, I basically get a pretty strong headwind of 18 knots. If I instead decided to fly at 6,000 feet, however, that headwind would be basically reduced to a crosswind, which would mean that I can get to my destination even faster. Now, if I was going from Syracuse to Albany, for example, I could do the opposite. What happens if I get up to 18,000 feet? Oh boy, 29 knot tailwind. Yeah, now we're a rocket ship. So it's a great, great, great way of actually determining precisely what altitude you need to cruise at in order to go ahead and calculate things along those lines. So now that we have that information all taken care of, let's go ahead and take a look at what we have for TAFs. Now, TAFs are just going to be your terminal area forecasts. This will give you the ability to see what the weather is going to be in the future. So for example, if I said I want to fly tonight at a zero, zero Zulu, keep in mind this is uh, where I am right now. It's a four hour difference. Of course, it's kind of changed clocks tonight to make things more exciting. You can see that it does a pretty darn good job of predicting both the weather direction, wind, as well as the clouds. In this case, we have reduced visibility. We also have some scattered clouds. Our temperatures are going to be a little low, and it's going to be pretty serious as far as that particular time goes to fly. If I take off a little bit sooner, a little bit earlier, you can see how all that stuff instantaneously changes. Now, one thing we're going to be using quite a bit of, if you're doing any flight planning, especially in the U.S., and you're not using one of the easy tools like Wix Brief, is you can actually go and take a look at each individual airport's wind by altitude. You can even come up here and set what time of day you want it to do. Now, where everybody always freaks out is they take a look here and say, why is the wind 99 at 00? zero? That doesn't mean that it's a 99 knot wind. It means there is no wind. Now, if you come all the way to this side, this number looks very, very intimidating, but it's actually not nearly as bad as it looks. Basically, uh, you have a pretty fast wind going on right here, and you'd always subtract 50, so it's like 117 knot wind. So pretty serious. It would also give you your temperatures, of course, for those of you who are interested in seeing it. And once you get past a certain altitude, all these temperatures are negative. So it's actually minus 57 degrees at an altitude of 39,000 feet. So it's actually really, really usable information. It's really, really useful. Again, this is an American site. If you need to get the stuff for uh, Europeans, you can always use Sky Vector. If you go way, way, way back to the beginning, you can actually click on things and it will give you the weather. You can literally see it right there as that little yellow pop-up that just jumped up right there. There's going to be slightly differences as far as reading all that information. And obviously, if you change the time of day on Sky Vector, it'll actually update that forecast for you as well, giving you better information. All right. Hopefully that's helpful. I just, like I said, I just want to put together a quick little video kind of showing off all the different sources of information I use. Like I said, I love this particular resource when I'm flying internationally. I love this resource pretty much all the time. And this is an absolutely dynamite resource for those of you who like to do virtual airline work. The NOTAM stuff, again, it works pretty well. There's a European version as well, depending on what you have. Again, it's going to be a little bit different depending on what you're trying to do. And these two websites here will do a lot of the flight planning themselves for you automatically. But keep in mind, these are things you have to sign up for in order to use. You have to also be tremendously careful with this one, especially because this is a real site that actual pilots use. As a matter of fact, if you were to put in a wrong flight plan, you could end up basically causing a felony. So you want to be very, very cautious with this particular site doing those things like that, which again, just stick to Sky Vector, you'll be pretty safe. And again, when we're doing pilotage, it's always nice to see a good old fashioned Google Maps or anything along those lines. All right, hopefully this video is helpful. Like I said, I just want to provide everybody with some background. So when we do start doing actual information with these particular websites, you'll have a pretty good idea of uh, what we're doing. Other than that, enjoy.